All right, so I know a few of you guys are out there using the uh, Banks iDash system, and I know a few of us out here really don't feel like spending that much money for it, and some of us can't spend that much money for it. Uh, so my solution, and something I've done on every rig now for quite a few years, is uh, I go on Amazon and I buy a uh, relatively inexpensive OBD2 interface. Um, I believe they're less than $20. Um, I buy this one right here. Okay. And then from there I use the OBD Fusion app. And if you're running Android Auto, you'll need to have your truck off. Um, and from there what you'll need to do is you'll need to go into your OBD Fusion app. We'll show you that real quick. Um, so you go into your OBD Fusion app. And then back out at the main screen, you're going to go to settings, settings, then you're going to go to preferences, and then you're going to go down to Android Auto, sure, then you go to Android Auto, and inside Android Auto is where you can go to PIDs, configure screens, and then that's going to bring you up all the different options. You'll have the different screen tabs um, that you can click into. So, for instance, I've got PIDs. PIDs is just standard engine temperature, RPM, uh, speed, and uh, uh, real-time fuel or uh, real-time fuel mileage average. Don't really use that one. My next one is trip, and trip is where I have all of my different. Uh, Trip is where I've got my engine oil temperature, engine exhaust gas temperature sensor 1, which is just off the turbo, engine exhaust gas temperature sensor 2, which is the one that's in the DPF filter, and that's the one that shows you when you're in a regen. And then I use my normalized trigger that tells me my soot percentage, um, so I know when I'm about to go into a regen, that way I make sure I don't turn my truck off. Uh, while I'm in a regen, I just kind of let it cook, um, tell how good of a regen I got, uh, you know, whether I brought that percentage down uh, significantly, which it usually does. Um, and then from there, let's see here. Sorry, when you get videos out of me, they're just raw. I don't put any special effort into editing anything. Uh, we're going to plug this into the OBD2 or OBD2 port. Make sure she's seated in real good. Oop. And then start the truck. So we fired up the truck. The screen should look like such. So sorry for the glare. Um, and then from there, we're in Android Auto, so we're going to select the OBD. And then from there, we can bring up our PIDs. That's going to display our RPM, engine oil temperature, instant fuel economy, vehicle speed. And then from there we can back out, we can go into trip. Trip is where I'm going to use my engine oil temperature. Sorry, I changed that first one from actual uh, coolant temperature. So I've got my oil temperature. I have my exhaust gas temperature sensor 1, exhaust gas temperature sensor 2. And those are usually pretty close until you're approaching a regen and you can see I'm 89.8% full. Um, you know, my last trip was running around about that, uh, you know, 35, 40 miles per hour, uh, just running around the back roads down here in southwest Washington, uh, about, you know, 30, 38 and a half miles of it at 30 miles per gallon. Uh, anyways, so if you're wondering how to get all that Banks i dash information on your infotainment screen. That's how you can save a lot of money. Um, I have found that just the inexpensive OBD2 diagnostic adapter works just fine. Um, I don't know that you can get any other information by spending more money on them. I know there's some of them out there that can actually get pretty expensive. 
but I don't think they really do anything different other than a different Bluetooth protocol. If you've got a newer phone and you're using one of those, you've got to use an older Bluetooth protocol, uh, Bluetooth basically low speed or low energy Bluetooth. Um, it, it took me a little while to connect to it in this truck since I've actually moved to a new phone since the last time. Um, other than that, I hope this helps you guys. Um, and that should do it. That should get you everything you need. Hi guys, me again. Something I forgot to add. Uh, if you're new to diesel, uh, a lot of you guys already know this. Uh, really good practice. Those temperatures, right? Your exhaust gas temperature sensor one. Um, when you come in from a, you know, come in from a freeway trip. Uh, running around town is really not so bad, but if you're just coming off the freeway, let's say you don't live far off the freeway or you're uh, jumping off the freeway to get fuel, you know, don't pull straight to the island and shut off. Uh, pull onto the side, watch that temperature, and let it minimize. You let that temperature really come down before you turn your truck off. Um, it, it saves a lot of wear and tear on your turbo. Uh, it's just generally good practice to do that. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. Have a good one show you a little something here as you can see I hit 100% and now I've got my exhaust gas sensor temperature 2 is really beginning to ramp up the temperature here unfortunately I'm stuck in sort of backwoods driving still so it's gonna be a partial regen but you can see that's already ramping up 23 uh, at higher speeds freeway speeds or so you'll get to about 1300 degrees on this uh, lower speeds you know 1100 or so um, we'll monitor it for a minute 931 38 950 so you can see she's really climbing up she's gonna be climbing well up over a thousand degrees here I am NOT in the lane of travel that's fun So there we go. And that is what she does to cook off the soot. Still climbing. We'll uh we'll monitor this and get back to you. Alright. You can see we're still we're about seven miles, six and a half miles into my return trip to my office. Uh, we're looking about, we're still holding over 1100. RPM is still up at about a thousand. You can see the fuel mileage has dropped off considerably. So the biggest, the only drawback really to this, you know, if you're, if you're not out on the freeway on your, in your truck is you're going to see more frequent regens, you know, 250, 300 mile range or so, as opposed to, there we go. We broke 1200 yeah. as opposed to, uh, you know, if you're out on the freeway, you're, you're going to be seeing regens at a much, much less frequent. Um, I just did a drive to Phoenix, Arizona, so what, uh, about a 3,000 mile round trip to me. And I was seeing a regen about every 500 miles. Um, as opposed to in town here, you know, I'm getting, um, uh, eh, I would say every 250, 300 or so. Um, I've actually got a page here that I can pull up and uh, figure out when that last one was. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Trip, bed. Uh, no, I don't have that one set. So, towing, did I put it in that one? Average distance, 270 miles. So, not bad for a commuter rig, right? Engine oil temperatures obviously running a lot higher during a regen because you know basically everything's running a lot hotter. Um, still holding at a thousand RPM, 900 or so. Um, exhaust gas temperature is still around 12. Um, so kind of the whole point of this video was to you know show you guys how to set up the uh, OBD Fusion app to give you your regen information on your uh, infotainment center and to kind of walk you through a whole regen. Um, yeah, I know a lot of you guys, you know, we've owned diesels for most of our driving lives, or at least a good part of it, but there's also a lot of guys out here that, 
you know, this is their first one or their first baby diesel or their first diesel since all this wonderful new EPA stuff. Um, 143 degrees. So this is just sort of a, a reassurance that, you know, if you're using your truck as a daily driver, it's okay. Um, you know, a lot of people will tell you don't hot dog around in these things. Really, uh, you know, drive like you're going to drive. Um, they're not afraid to be, you know, they're not, they're not afraid to be hot dogged around a little bit. Um, but you also don't want to beat them up like you would something like a 13 liter Cummins, you know. Um, common sense is really the biggest part of it. Um, we're not going to see 1300 degrees here, I don't think. No, we're not going to see 1300, but we'll get a pretty good regen out of this. Uh, when that temperature starts to drop off, um, or you, you've noticed when you've come to a traffic light and you've gone back down to a, a normal idling range that you're out of regen, that normalized trigger number takes a little while to adjust. Um, everything in, this, in these trucks works on an algorithm. Um, you know, it, it's, it, 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 it's not instantaneous information. It takes a little bit of time for the system to calculate what's going on. Uh, that's why your def fluid level is always so wonky when you're towing as the truck's trying to project uh you know if you if you keep up this pace how far will you be able to go unfortunately that system is very flawed everybody knows it anybody who's towed uh any decent weight with it knows that gm still has some work to do on that system um it's considerably flawed and shows all kinds of false warnings and um you know your best bet in that situation is Carry a bottle of DEF with you. Uh, if you start getting close to that reduced power limit, uh, shut your truck down, you know, get off the road, stretch your legs, shut your truck off, give it a good start cycle, you know, a good shutdown and restart cycle. Um, that adds the tendency to let the system adjust to what your actual range is. But of course, it's gonna do it again and it'll keep doing it until GM fixes that program. A um, little bit of a, little bit of a inconvenience, a little bit of a, a, uh, a nuisance, but eh, that's that's the wonderful world of new technology, right? Uh, it's every time you need to print something important, the printer jams. Every time you're in a hurry, your computer won't connect to the internet. Um, uh, let's see, wait through this traffic light here. See, 1232, I just came to a stop. Probably no. Man, we get to go. So we've maintained over 1,200. We should be pretty close to done with this regen now. I would imagine. Possibly. Maybe not. Maybe we won't get to finish it until we actually get back out on the freeway later. Back to my office to a couple of reports and uh ooh, truck in front of me just locked up his brakes uh yeah so we'll get back to the office we'll do a couple of reports and we'll get a full regen in when we head home maybe it'll uh maybe it'll run a little bit longer and give me a good clean dpf fill or dpf when i'm done here know if you probably can't really hear through through this camera um, but the truck definitely does sound much more diesel-y right uh, so you kind of know there we go temperatures really dropping off uh, normalized trigger for DPF regen is 7.5 percent so that was actually a pretty good regen for driving around in town um, We're going to get to the back here. We will actually not go to the back. I'm going to, yeah, we are going to try to go into the back. And uh, we'll show you what happens there. So see my temperatures, you know, it's really coming back down. Got a good spot to park right there. Uh, 
a little bit crowded. We'll figure it out. That's what cameras are for. All right, bear with me. Oh, and you can see, idles back down to normal range. And we'll try not to hit the Subarus. Or the engineer Subaru. He probably wouldn't like that very well. Anyhow. Oh yeah, yeah. It definitely smells different now that I've slowed down and backed into my own fart for a little bit. still still clipping a little bit high you can see my range is, is considerably down from what it normally is um, but that temperature is equalizing and uh, we're gonna let those guys we're gonna let that 460 uh, so we're gonna let sensor one get down you know 300 or so before we turn it off um, yeah and that's about it uh, 5.88 see that's going to continue to adjust down as you drive um, as the system figures you know as the system monitors back pressure and sort of tries to figure out how dirty the dpf is um, that number will change a little bit and uh, that's 5.49 percent it's not bad uh, i think the lowest i've seen it's two but yeah anyhow guys uh, i hope this helps you out take care